Welcome to Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project, NevadaBike.org and BikeWashoe.org. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder and talk to people about their bikes and their lives. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on. Does a four-lane highway belong in your neighborhood? Imagine that sound 24-7 just feet from your front door. No one following the speed limits. It's terrifying and deadly. This is the reality of daily life for people who live on Keystone Avenue. But now there's a chance to start to change it. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County is considering replacing the Keystone Bridge. Some people want the bridge shut down and removed entirely. Or reimagined completely to fit our modern vision of a walkable neighborhood. You can speak your mind at www.keystonebridgeproject.com and at the end of this show we'll have recommendations for you to make on the survey on that website keystonebridgeproject.com here's the problem the keystone bridge is essentially a four-lane highway through a residential neighborhood it's so wide because when it was originally built it was imagined that there would be a higher density of housing near idlewild park But that hasn't come to fruition, and there aren't enough cars or people to support a highway there. Speeds are so high that people who live along Keystone are terrified every time they leave their homes. At public meetings, people have suggested shutting down the Keystone Bridge completely. They could make the road windy to slow speeds, for instance, or reduce the lanes so that the high-speed traffic is funneled away from the neighborhood, over to streets like McCarran or downtown Reno. That would only add a few minutes to people's car commutes and improve the character and walkability of the Keystone neighborhood. However, the proposals from the road managers with the Regional Transportation Commission would not address the terrifying speeds. In fact, it could get worse. Right now, semi-trucks get stuck when they turn from California westbound onto Keystone. The plans from the Regional Transportation Commission would make it so that the massive semi-trucks can more easily turn onto Keystone from California Avenue, and that would effectively invite more loud, massive semi-trucks onto California and Keystone over the river. Yes, the proposals do add protected bike and pedestrian lanes over the beautiful Truckee River, which is nice, but no one wants to ride or walk next to cars traveling at dangerous highway speeds or semi-trucks, which would ruin the tranquility of the Truckee River. Today's show is dedicated to the people who live on Keystone and how the decisions by the Regional Transportation Commission about the Keystone Bridge directly impact their quality of life because of the speed of traffic on Keystone Avenue right outside their homes. First, we talked to Eddie and then Bree, both of whom live on Keystone Avenue. How's it going? Good. I'm, uh, I'm Kai with Bike Life Radio. How are you? Um, good. My yeah. name is Edson. Edson? You can uh, call me Eddie. Uh-huh. Eddie? Yeah. Right. This is Kobe. Hi, Kobe. My little one. So uh, I do a radio show about uh, bikes and okay. and road safety, and we're talking to Bree, who's your neighbor down the street. She's right on uh, Keystone too, and we're talking about you know how safe the street is and if it needs changes. Do you would you be willing to tell us? Yeah, what you think? We, we live here. Uh, so Edson, uh, yeah, you 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 live here on Keystone. What do you think of of Keystone? Is it safe or not safe? Yeah, I live here about two weeks now. So yeah, I think is is really safe it's really beautiful too uh-huh. we love it living here uh, the people the neighbor is really nice the the traffic is on the friday is really busy because the in the summer have here the food trucks uh, over over there but yeah i think is is really nice it's really safe it yeah. yeah 
What about the traffic? Is there too much traffic or is it too fast or do oh. you feel like it's okay? Yeah, I, I feel it's really fast. Yeah, yeah I, I really it's really fast and the all direction, I keep my, my little inside the house. Uh -huh, your child. Yeah. yeah, but but yeah, it's really busy. In this point uh -huh. for the traffic, it's really is really busy. Yeah. Yeah, has, yeah. Has anybody told you that they're replacing this bridge and that there's public, that the public can participate and give ideas on how to improve the bridge? No, I, I don't hear nothing about that. No yet. Nah. I, I'm living here so yeah. uh, two weeks now, so uh -huh. no, I know here not, not about no. All right. Well, yeah. that's some good uh, feedback for the Regional Transportation Commission is to let people know that they can give comments on the street that they on changes to the street that they live on all right uh anything else that you want to say about uh this street or you know what would you like to see uh i want to see more people run because i'm a runner <laughs> so <laughs> but on this traffic is really impossible uh -huh. yeah, so one of the things they're gonna they think they're talking about doing is making making it so that people can go across the bridge on foot Oh, it's really nice, really nice. Yeah, yeah it was a good project, but uh, I think it's really beautiful. Uh -huh. It's really nice, everything here, but the traffic now is, yeah, it's really busy now. Do yeah. you think there should be footpaths on both sides of the street or just one? Uh, just one. Yeah. Just one side? Yeah, just one side, yeah. All right. Uh, great. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, sure. uh, have a great day, Edson. Oh, you too. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, you too. So uh, to answer your question, Kai, um, I kind of thought that was unusual as well because I got more than two posters in the mail or postcards in the mail about, from the city about the public meeting, but none of my neighbors did because they're renters. Oh. So apparently they only notified homeowners. Really? People who lived in their homes and are homeowners. I wonder why the Regional Transportation Commission in the city would only tell people who are homeowners. What, what do you think? Is it, what are some reasons for that in your mind? I know that you don't have the answers, but... Well, just like that guy, he's only been here two weeks. And how, we don't know how long he's going to really stay. So it's, it would make sense to ask the homeowners who've been here a long time and who plan to stay. And, you know, their property may or may not be affected by what's going to happen around it. Do you think that they should tell renters too? I think it is important to let the entire community know what's going to be going on, especially about construction timing and closures. They're going to be talking about closing the bridge, which I'm looking forward to. We can actually see what it would be like with people not commuting through our neighborhood. This is Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM. First we heard from Eddie and then Bree, who live on Keystone Avenue. The Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County is considering replacing the nearby Keystone Bridge, but the proposals would not solve the terrifying speeds on that road. In fact, it could make it worse, making it easier for big trucks to use California Avenue and turn onto Keystone. Currently, they get stuck when they try to make that turn going westbound. You can go to keystonebridgeproject.com and tell the RTC what you think. At the end of this show, we're going to have some recommendations. Again, keystonebridgeproject.com. There's a survey there, and we'll have some recommendations at the end of the show. Next, we're going to talk to Lacey, who also lives on Keystone Avenue, and then we're going to hear from Bree again, who has some innovative ideas. And uh, Lacey, you live on Keystone Avenue. Did you know that they're, gonna, they're talking about replacing the bridge? I think they should do a roundabout so they can slow down. Yeah. Because a lot of times, like, there's kids out here that is and there's old people and stuff, so I think they slow down, like, beep, beep, like, slow down. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Yeah, so awful. a radio, or a, a roundabout somewhere, it would be nice. You you really want people to slow down. You yeah. Think, why? Why? Do you why? Want people because there's people walking. Sometimes there's crazy people who will be coming around here. They can hit somebody. They think it's okay just to speed through here. And it's just, like, uh, disrespectful to the people who are walking around here. It's just a family place. Um... If I were to tell you that the proposals right now wouldn't slow down traffic at all and might even make it faster, what do you think of that? I just think you need to slow down. I don't care how fast your car goes. You don't have to rev it up. We can all hear it in a different kind of situation. So me personally, it's called a speed limit and it's put there for a reason. Because let's just say like, um, I'm going to cross the street real quick to go say hi to my friend. 
even if I take the crosswalk, they're still going to hit me. I've been almost sideswiped several times, so I'm like, no. You don't need to rev that engine because you're dummy gaslighting shit. It's a red light, bro. Slow down. <laughs> All right. Do you not see that? <laughs> Thank you. I, yeah. I really appreciate hearing uh, hearing different voices, and so Bree's taking me around to different people who are uh, who live here. So <laughs> she's in trouble, huh? No, I didn't <laughs> see that coming, but thank you. Thank you. This is what it used to be like, Brie? Yeah, this is the sound of the traffic that it used to be like maybe three, four years ago. I used to actually be able to pull out of my driveway. Um, I have to actually back out onto Keystone to get out of my driveway. And it used to be something I didn't have to time with the lights. You could just wait for a break in traffic. And now you have to wait for a time in the lights. And even then, people are turning from 1st or 2nd Street onto Keystone and they think it's their turn and I hardly have the ability to pull out. And I think about what it's like for people on a bike or the old lady trying to walk down the street or across the street for that matter. And just feeling scared crossing four lanes of traffic with the turn lane and not knowing if these people are actually going to stop or not. You know, it's like... I've asked for them to put in a speed limit sign to remind people the speed so they don't think this is a highway. What, what kind of speed are people going here? I constantly sit on my front porch and I just point out not 30 miles an hour, not 30 miles an hour. And I can tell you over 45 is the average of what I see people. And I don't have a speed gun. I can just hear the <laughs> of them as they go by. Okay, it's, it's a safety issue that you've pointed out for other people. Um, and it's not just something that you're making up in your mind. You've had some incidents at, yes. your, at your house, right? Yes. I've had more than one friend that was parked outside of my house, was hit by a car, going at speeds that were over the speed limit. Um, and one friend, their car was completely totaled. The axles ripped off their car and they had to get a completely new truck. It was a truck. It wasn't just a normal little car. You know, and I've even asked the city to put lines in to reinforce the areas that are for parked cars, um, just so people feel safe enough to be able to put their cars on Keystone. Now they're talking about replacing this bridge, and it's not going to go. That this project's not going to go all the way up to your house. But um, how do you feel about the proposals to well, replace this bridge? I think that is something to look at big picture. The last time they did a Keystone study, it was for California Street to McCarran. And then they only made changes from the freeway of Keystone to McCarran. And so if we're going to make these changes from California to the middle of Keystone, why not bring it to the last place that we stopped off, which would be the freeway? Um, and the study included all of this information that we can reference that talks about the safety for pedestrians, for bicyclists, for handicap access. Um, and it was brought up then in 2014 that it was a problem. Um, and this area hasn't been fixed since. That was 10 years ago. And they want to bypass it again and just focus on the bridge project, which was nice. But it, to be honest, it blends into the neighborhood around it. And it'd be nice if we took a big picture look at what we're really doing for the city. So, you know, they're, they're, they have to replace the bridge now. And, and just to describe uh, Keystone Avenue here, it's four lanes across. They don't have to replace the bridge. It's an option to replace the bridge. They could make edits to the places that need structural integrity and they could do some support to it. They don't need to change the bridge. It's because we have this federal money to be able to do this kind of infrastructure work that the city got and they're using it for the Keystone Bridge. Mm. Um, when in that fact, we could use that money for the Dicker over Dickerson. You know, you went down Dickerson, there used to be a bridge down there to get the people out of that little narrow alley and they took that access away when they did the train trench. And it'd be nice to see them put a bridge back in over there especially as they've been adding more condos down in that area. Over the Truckee River to Idlewild Park. Yes. Yeah. Well, or even just to get back over to 4th Street like they used to have it. Yeah. So uh, you would like to see, what, what, what is your vision uh, that you would like? Here? Well, kind of coming back to that 
grand scheme of what Reno is looking for, like a master plan. Um, we've been getting a lot of slack for as a city overall for not having enough shade. And I think it'd be really nice to combine Idlewild with Wingfield and all the money we spent on the river walk and kind of create a green belt. Um, I think it'd be nice to have a land bridge over Keystone that isn't four cars, maybe just one lane access for emergency personnel. Um, but it'd be really nice, like that guy said, he's only been here two weeks and he's looking for somewhere where he can be active and he can be outdoors and he can enjoy the beauty of our area. I think it'd be great to have a park on the bridge, something where it would incorporate the community coming together, maybe a little bit of both Idlewild and Wingfield put together with like an amphitheater that the community could have concerts and events and maybe even a place you could set up and do your aerial silks or do yoga outside. Um, maybe even like that workout gym at Idlewild that gets used. Expand it, make a big one, have it over the bridge, looking over the river with the really good wind and it would be a great place for people to come together and when you look at it on the map actually, um, this is where all the greenery is and so it makes sense to have something unique in this space, kind of combining Idlewild and Wingfield, which is both of our really beautiful places to bring community together. Things like that are not on the radar at all. Like we went to the meeting together right. and we looked at all the posters. One of them is to potentially have only two lanes on the bridge instead right. of four. Um, but that's about as far outside the box as there's any thinking here. Would you like to see more of more options that yes. are outside the box? Yeah. Yes, I mean, especially right now, the world is kind of growing in awareness about land bridges and helping animals cross in places where we have a lot of urban growth. But how nice would it be to have a land bridge for humans? Maybe take away the ability for Keystone to be a connecting unit and allow McCarran and our downtown to carry that extra, in you know, commuting and allow this to be neighborhoods, allow this to be people walking and biking and handicap access and... This is Bike Life Radio from KWNK 97.7 FM. That was Bree, who lives on Keystone Avenue, where accidents, terrifying speeds, and pedestrian deaths are rampant. But current proposals underway right now to replace the Keystone Bridge would not solve those problems and might even make it worse, inviting semi-trucks to use California Avenue and turn onto Keystone westbound. Now there's a website, and on the website, there's a survey that you can fill out. The website is keystonebridgeproject.com. Here are some suggested answers to the questions on the survey. On question one, do you support the proposed alternatives? Well, you can answer no. The proposed alternatives do not sufficiently reduce speeds, are not appropriate for the neighborhood, and do not beautify the area. Semi-trucks should not be traveling on California Avenue, turning westbound onto Keystone. On question number two, it's asking about uh, cycle tracks. Uh, you should pick the two-way protected cycle track if possible. Residents of the area complain about high speeds on Keystone Avenue and accidents and the dangerous feel of the bridge and the road. This freeway-like four-lane design was never appropriate for the area. The density and traffic volume also do not require four lanes of traffic. So those are the answers that you can uh, answer in the survey if you like. Next week, we're going to have part two of the interviews on Keystone Avenue. And it'll be the rest of the interview with Bree Casper, who lives on Keystone. She would like the bridge on Keystone to be reimagined to make a more walkable and beautiful neighborhood. Instead, the proposals on the table would not solve the speed problem and might make it worse by making it easier for semi-trucks to use California Avenue and turning uh, westbound when they're going westbound onto Keystone. That would invite the semi-trucks to use California Avenue coming from downtown. 
Go to KeystoneBridge.com to tell the RTC your vision of what the Keystone Bridge could be. This is KWNK 97.7 FM from the Reno Bike Project on Grove Street and NevadaBike.org. BikeWashoe.org too. That's it for Bike Life Radio. We ride our bikes out into the world with a recorder, and we talk to people about their bikes and their lives. Now at a new time at 5.30 every Sunday. I'm Kai Plaskon. Right on.